What's going on my trainer club? Today we are gonna check out what is the best utilization of shadow Pokemon in Pokemon Go and when do you purify those shadow Pokemon? So welcome to the trainer club, here we go! Welcome back everybody. Let me know in the comments below, how do you do with your shadow Pokemon? Do you have any good quality ones? Have you powered any up? Do you purify them frequently maybe to get better IVs? I am curious to see what everybody does with their shadow Pokemon in Pokemon Go because I'm excited to break down this topic because more recently I have been researching some of the shadow Pokemon in Pokemon Go and I've been seeing the differential between the two and really seeing how much difference the attack, the defense, the TDO, everything like that gets influenced by the Pokemon being Shadow. So what we're gonna do today, we're gonna compare the Go Battle League Pokemon as far as some of the top Shadow Pokemon and where their non-Shadow forms fit. And then we're also going to see, as far as meta raid attackers, how some of these Pokemon stack up with some of the most powerful movesets in the game. So let's get into all the information right now. Starting off, I thought it would be pretty cool because a lot of you guys have been with me for a while. You've seen some of my top attacker videos. You see how we do DPS, TDO, and DPS times TDO. And DPS times CDO is basically looking at the overall effectiveness of a Pokemon in the game. So I pulled Shadow Pokemon in here to see overall in the game as far as everything right now, what are the most powerful Pokemon and how their DPS times CDO stacks up over the top 10. So let's check that out right now. So if we're checking out overall DPS times CDO, number one in the game, top overall, including Black Qram, is going to be Shadow Metagross with Bullet Punch Meteor Mash, which is the Community Day move of 6,462. Wow, that is insanely powerful. One of the reasons why, if you guys have been seeing my videos, I mentioned that I'm hunting down a good quality Shadow Beldum. And then, if we then go to Black Qram, it's Dragon Tail Outrage at 6,026. Then we have the Reigning Supreme Psychic Mewtwo Confusion Psy Strike at 5,994. And then if we go down to the fifth spot, we have Shadow Salamence, Dragon Tail Outrage, Community Day Move at 5898. Then we have Shadow Metagross again with actually Zen Headbutt Meteor Mash at 5740. Shadow Salamence, Dragon Tail Draco Meteor, 5254. And then we have Shadow Dragonite, Dragon Tail Outrage at 5218. Black Qram with the Dragon Tail Blizzard at 5194. And then at the bottom, we have another Shadow Salamence with Fire Fang Outrage at 4957. So if we are gonna compare just the Metagross to the non-Shadow version, we're looking at the Bullet Punch Meteor Mash at 3615, which is a huge differential. So coming back from checking that out, it is quite stark of a difference between the Shadow and the regular Meteor Mash Metagross. It's really big, guys. We're talking over 6,000 compared to 3,600. That's almost double. And according to a lot of sources, it says that the Shadow Pokemon are 20% increase in attack, 20% decrease in defense. But if that was the case, how would the DPS times TDO virtually double overall, which is what it currently sits at, which is really, really powerful. So now let's look at some meta rate attackers. Let's see where they line up and then we'll check out some of the deaths compared to the regular and the shadow forms because they are definitely a little bit glassier. So if we're gonna compare the Verizian counters, which is a great one to do because we can use Shadow Moltres compared to regular Moltres. If we see the difference here, we're gonna have Shadow Moltres with a time to win of 469 seconds in comparison to the regular Moltres with a time to win of 494. And if we're looking at the Shadow Moltres, it's going to die 25 times in comparison to the regular Moltres, that is going to die 17 times. Then if we're gonna move on to the Reshiram, we're gonna check out at the top, we have Shadow Dragonite number one, Dragon Tail Dragon Claw, with 647 seconds to win with 38 deaths. Next to it is gonna be Shadow Salamence with Dragon Tail Outrage at 663. If we then go back to the Dragonite, it's gonna die 38 times compared to its counterpart, which is gonna be the non-shadow version of 41 deaths. So it actually dies less in this instance, and it's gonna be over 100 seconds better than the 758 as far as the non-shadow Dragonite. As far as the Salamence go, it's going to die 45 times in the shadow form, and then in the regular form, it's actually gonna die less which makes sense of 42 deaths with the Dragon Tail Outrage combination, but 739 seconds compared to 663 seconds. So if we take those comparisons, the Shadow Moltres is going to be better, but it's obviously going to die more. 
and we only have the ability to get one Shadow Moltres. But if we look at the Dragonite and the Salamence, we have the ability to get a lot of Salamences right now. Granted, it's a lot more time consuming and we don't always get the right IVs, but with maximum best stats, we are looking at a quite significant difference and in the Dragonite's case, in the Shadow form, it actually dies less which makes a crazy amount of no sense to me. That you can be stronger, but probably because you're killing that Pokemon faster so you actually don't have to be in there longer. Because the Dragon Tail and the Dragon Breath combination is going to charge so fast, you're just gonna chew that Pokemon all the way down when you compare it to the other one, which is then recommended with an Outrage move. So one more comparison, let's go take that Metagross that was so incredibly powerful and let's put it against itself and check it out. So with Metagross being the number one counter here and Steel being a weakness, this is gonna be Shadow Metagross, Bullet Seed, Meteor Mash. Has to have Meteor Mash. Time to win 814 seconds with 26 deaths. Then, if we check out the regular Metagross, which is going to be the same moveset, Bullet Punch, Meteor Mash, it's going to be 987 seconds with 27 deaths. So actually, once again, as a Meta Raid attacker, the Shadow form is dying one less time. So, what do we see here? We see a significant improvement as far as the time to win. It's really going to help out, especially in situations where you're trying to duo it or beat it in a very short amount of time. The downside is we have to fight more of these Pokemon. We have to get more. We only have the ability to get the Shadow Legendaries one time and we cannot lucky trade them which is definitely going to hinder our performance in this regard so what i recommend you guys go ahead and power up a poor quality shadow legendary for a meta raid attacker probably not but as far as the beldums and the bagons we do have the ability to get them from the team leaders right now with shiny potentials and if you do get a good one you can see how powerful those pokemon actually are so now let's transition into the go battle league so now we're going to check out a couple pokemon in the go battle league with different league situations to see how it fares in the great ultra and master league starting off with the swampert so number one in the great league the regular swampert is going to be ranked four compared to the shadow swampert which is going to be ranked 10. If we then go to the Ultra League, the Shadow Swampert is ranked two, regular Swampert is gonna be ranked four. And in the Master League, regular Swampert is going to come above the Shadow Swampert, which is gonna be ranked 23. All of them have the Mudshot, Hydro Cannon, Earthquake moveset on them. So what happens here? Why does the Shadow Pokemon shine more in some leagues? And it's going to vary. In this situation, the Shadow Swampert in the Ultra League needs a little bit more of that attack to really make it more effective. I mean, we're going from two to fourth place, but when it hits that much harder, it's going to do a lot more damage, which is gonna be very powerful. So next, let's check out the Gardevoir and see how it does here. As far as Gardevoir does in the Great League, we have 58 Shadow Gardevoir, Charm, Synchronoise, and Shadow Ball compared to 158 on the regular Gardevoir. Then if we go into the Ultra League, we have Shadow Gardevoir ranked 33, regular Gardevoir ranked 141. And finally, if we go into the Master League, we are looking at Shadow Gardevoir ranked 27. Charm, Synchronoid, Shadow Ball, again, compared to regular Gardevoir, that's gonna be ranked 60. And if we look at it as a meta raid attacker, Shadow Gardevoir with Confusion and Psychic is gonna be 2722. If we look at it with Shadow Gardevoir with Confusion and Shadow Ball, we have 2014. If we check out regular Gardevoir, we have Confusion Psychic at 1528, which is gonna be 1200 points below. So that difference is big. Why might Gardevoir in the Shadow form be more powerful and ranked better in the leagues? So as far as this goes, the Charm is a very powerful move. It does not charge very fast. Things like the Charm, the Razor Leaf, we have Confusion. Those moves are gonna be very powerful, a little bit slower charging, and they're gonna do a lot of damage. So if you can have a more powerful Pokemon delivering more DPS per hit than you can the other one that's a little bit more tanky, you're gonna be winning because you're chunking down their health a lot more. So this really holds weight, and Gardevoir is a great example overall because of that charm move. So now let's check out two more examples. Number one is gonna be the Metagross followed by the Victory Belt, which does hold the Razor Leaf move set. So as far as the Metagross in the Great League, it's going to be 287 compared to the Shadow Form at 323. In the Ultra League, the regular Metagross shines above it, 193 compared to 211 with the Shadow. And then finally, in the Master League, we have the 15 Metagross with the 40 Shadow Metagross. Metagross with the regular form is a little bit more tanky, so although it can do more damage, it's going to die a lot quicker. You really want the Metagross to stay in there, especially since it's gonna charge up to Earthquake. So having the regular form is going to outrank the Shadow in this regard. And then as far as the Victory Bell, so the Shadow form in the Great League is gonna be Razor Leaf, Leaf Blade, Acid Spray, 
62 compared to Victory Bell, 94 with the regular form. If we go to the Ultra League, the shadow form is going to be ranked 64 compared to 133 without the shadow form. And so if you guys have not played against a Victory Bell with the Razor Leaf in either the Great or the Ultra League, this Pokemon does a ton of damage per move. So this is going to show why the shadow dominates this. So what is the conclusion here? Number one, you have to check out PV Poke, check out what the rankings are for the Go Battle League. As far as the meta rate attackers, like I said, highly suggest you guys try to get good ones. I wouldn't suggest powering any of them up, but if you have like a 96, a 93, you can save it and hopefully evolve it all the way to the Metagross with the Community Day move, and it's going to shine for you. So overall, Shadows, way more powerful. They can die a lot more, but only in certain situations are they warranted to stay Shadows, and other situations they are warranted to go. So you really need to verse yourself with which ones are best. You can check out the counter guys with the deaths and the time to win and compare which is gonna be. Poke Battler is a great resource to you. So I hope this helps guys. Hope it clarified some of the shadow Pokemon and whether you are going to keep them as shadows or you're going to clarify them. But Metagross Raid Attacker is a great shadow one. We also have the Entei which shines as a Meta Raid Attacker because if we're looking at the overall Pokemon right now, we have Entei with Fire Fang Overheat, 3789 overall DPS times TDO, which is going to be the highest fire attacker in the game, even above Reshiram. So that's why I am keeping my 96% shiny Entei that I got lucky with to be the shadow form, and I'm buddy boosting it all the way up. So that's going to do it, guys. Hope you guys enjoy this. Thank you for all my likers, commenters, subscribers, Patreon members. Everybody takes their support, subscription, and participation to the next level. I'm going to see you guys out on that next video. Peace. I just want to take a moment and sincerely thank all of my Patreon members, everybody that has taken their subscription to the next level and chosen to support me on this platform. I greatly appreciate you guys as a growing channel and really trying to grow and improve as much as I possibly can. I really appreciate the extra support. You guys mean the absolute world to me. I cannot wait to connect with you soon and I appreciate you guys all for being a part of the Trainer Club. I will see you guys out on that next video.